the Melchizedek priesthood is a priesthood of kingship and priesthood. It's in one. That's why that anointing that comes from Jesus down onto the body makes us a royal priesthood or a kingdom of kings and priests. It's an anointing that does that. Jesus is the king. He does not just make us citizens of the kingdom. Jesus takes us to a higher order in that when he is glorified as king, he makes all the citizens of that kingdom kings as well. And we become a family of kings and priests through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, the glorification of Jesus Christ is very, very powerful because Jesus went through a process of being glorified and culminating with the ascension of Jesus, where he ascended into heaven and he's now seated on the throne as the head of the church. And so he is the head in heaven and the church is his body on the earth made up of many members. So I'm looking at a microcosm of the body of Christ here this morning. But we are joined together with Jesus, not on an organizational unity or boardroom unity. We are joined together with Jesus by a generic unity. It is by the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of glorification. It is the Holy Spirit. So that is, it's a spirit of glory. And so Romans 3.23 tells us what happened for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when man fell, man lost that glorification of God in his life. He lost how to be good and he became bad. You can never be good without God because only God is the very essence of goodness and that's he gives us in his, his glory. And so how does Jesus restore that glory? It is amazing how salvation takes us back to how man was before he fell. That's the purpose of God. That's restoration. But restoration is always double. So not only does he take you back to how Adam was before he fell, he, he does it double because now you become like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Adam didn't become like Jesus. And so your destiny is to become like Jesus. You, and, and your destiny is to live in the Garden of Eden again. And to live a life of innocence. Now, that's a scandal of the gospel. The mercy and grace of God. He takes guilty people and he makes them innocent. Man and, and the world will mock you by, their fail, by your failures and your weaknesses. But God mocks you by Jesus Christ's perfection. So when Jesus Christ, when God is looking at you, he's looking at you through the eyes of Jesus. And when you get anointed to see yourself the way God sees you, then you are changed from one level of glory into another level of glory. It is all released by your sight, how you see yourself, your identity. And God is looking at you through Jesus. That is why there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. God is redeemed your past. And he has uh, secured your future. 
and he has given you power in the present and given you a faith that can transcend time and go into the future and bring the future into the now and make it a reality in your life. If somebody, can somebody just get excited about it?